All right. So let's close all notifications. And let's close this one. So we need a real API, right? Um, yeah. Okay. We need our real API, yeah. Open our real API here. All right, we don't have any viewers yet, so. Yeah, it's okay. They'll come. Okay, so um, let's see if our API is running. Come on, come on, come on. All right, so Spork is running. Proxy for solar is running. Is this your computer or are you SSHing your home? No, no, this is my, my computer. This, this would actually be helpful for a lot of people who are trying to learn. Since yeah, they'll be sure. on the same level with me, you know, like, because you're above most people. Like, you're above, like, most people. But I, I, I'm the more, the, like, the uh, average dojo. All right, let's see what happened here. Something happened. Um, let's see, Ruby-V. Oh, okay. So, RV and init. And then... The console again. Oh, the server is the same thing. So I'll be having it. And then let's start the real server here. Um, four. We don't actually need Spork because we already have the APIs working, right? Yeah, we don't need Spork. Um, I think we just need to ping slash current. That's the that's the only only endpoint we need working. yeah yeah i think so too um all right so this is the new matching tool so we don't need this one we need to start the project Let, let's scratch. just start from scratch yeah all right so let's go to our code directory and let's think about what we are building here okay yeah so if we open up um what is it called? Balsamic here. Um, we can kind of sketch what we want to create, right? Mm -hmm. So what you want to create is we want to create a, basically a way for admins to simulate Slash. one of the application, one of the API calls, and then get the URLs for them to get the deep links for the push notifications, right? Yeah, to get a JSON response, I think. Everything is in the response of that. Yeah, everything is in the response. Um, so one thing is we want to recreate one of our API calls, right? Yeah. So what's the need like walk me through what do they need because i'm I'm not sure you mean what's the need for the yeah yeah what, what do they need what 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 kind of parameters do they need from i have to check on that Um, I'm going to 
simulated on the solids. So, oh, yeah, I, I have it here. I have a uh, slash current. Okay, so this is like an example, right? Yeah. Let's go to like that. All right, so go ahead and okay. So let's simulate this. All right, so what do they need? I'm gonna send this to you. All right, so let me open Slack. This is like an example call. Okay. Yeah. All right, send it to me. Uh, I did. All right. Okay, so let's let's bypass. All right, so we have AP an API call here, yeah. um, and this API call shows calls current, right? Yeah. And then we have a check in and check out date. So current date and then check in and check out. They have latitude and longitude. Day of the week, visitor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Version right. and okay, so we have this. So we need to simulate all of these params. Yeah. Right. And then, what do they need to get out of it? Do they need? They need this this stuff, right? Yeah, but they need the URL or they need everything. Yeah, but why do they need this? Why do they need like the module? I what do they need from? Because it? when they call slash show a lot of these data yeah but the all of this data is here okay because the params are translated into the url yeah right yeah well yeah i mean but they need the endpoint they need the url they need the object type right they need the very no they don't need nothing they need the icon they do need that like why why do title. they need it huh the icon the icon is going to tell them what to show the icon is like a, a symbol that they have yeah, on but the client they, side. They only need it for to hook into it for the push notifications, right? But we're not concerned with that, right? We just need to give this to Allison and she can decide what to do. She can, we give her everything and she will work with the client side to decide what she wants to send push notification. So when she sends push notification, she can decide what data to put in the push notification so the client side can open the appropriate module. So why do we need to pick for them? We just give them everything. Like it would make it things because, simpler for yeah, us. Yeah, it would make it, it would make it simpler for us, but it will make it more complicated for them because if we give them everything from here, which they clearly don't need. I think let's they don't even out. know what they need. Let's expose the happy hour clock, all right? And expose the URL. And if that's not enough, we can expose more. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, if it doesn't add complexity, sure. The thing yeah. is, they have she has not come up with a procedure with the client side of how to make it work. The client just said. She asked the client side, right? The client said, "Okay, we need all this." this is automated process. The client doesn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So she comes to us and say, Hey, you know, can you give me the data that the client needs? This is the data. This right. is everything. Yeah. So we need something like this. Okay. So we need, um, so the application will look something like this. So let's have, um, a text input here. Sorry, not a text. We need a text input. And this will be um, region ID. So she will input the region ID. Yep. All right, which she clearly can get from any one of our admin panels, right? Yeah. Um, and then she will put, uh, let's duplicate this. Uh, what else do we need? Um, so a check-in check-out is doesn't really matter because it doesn't really matter for the input. So we need Visitor, a yeah. current date. Current date, yeah. Right, and she'll have I don't know. Depending on, on our time, we can have it as a text input um, or um, you know a date picker like we have in the in the map or in any one of our admin tools. Yeah. Um, so she needs a current date. Um, and she needs to know whether it's a visitor or not, right? Yep. 
So we'll have this and then visitor. And here we'll have like a checkbox. And I will do something like this. All right? Mm -hmm. So that's basically all she needs for us. That's all we need to construct this. Tribes? Um, yeah, we can do tribes. Um, all right, well, yeah, let's do simplify that. Because the tribes are only for logged in users. Um, but we can do. Uh, I think there's a couple more. Current date. So we can do tribes. Lat long. Okay, that's very important. Yeah, but lat long is only is based on the region. No, 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 it's not. She's gonna send push notification. For the region, it's the lat long current of location, the region. Though they want current location. But what's the current location? How are you gonna push notification for the current location? So the lat long will come from the client. Okay, that's true. All right, so we'll do this. All right, so tribe one and then um, tribe two. All right, so she'll pick tribe this way. Okay? Current time, I think. Uh, time, because. Yeah, the time is actually necessary. That's necessary. So how are we passing the time? Uh, we have the current date. Device I oh the, this one the local date time. Mm, they have two. I think it's current. Oh, current, current time. time. All right. So let's have this. And obviously it's not going to look like this, but current time. All right. I did tell you place ID, travel union ID, place ID. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I think that's that's about it. And then when getaway, um, a lot more friends call it. Yeah, we we can leave that for now. Oh, yeah, let's leave that. Let's just um, do the most simplified version. Yeah, I think I think that should be enough for everything here. And then she'll have a button to submit right here. Mm -hmm. And then we will we'll show, right? So we will show something like this. So let's, we'll have a text area here, right? Once, you once she submits, we'll have a text area here. And then the title, here, so this is morning o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll have, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, breakfast ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So here we'll have the params she can copy, paste into whatever, you know, uh, push notification tool she's using. Um, and you know, this she can copy this, she can copy this, and then she can do this again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So these are the individual slash show, the in, we're gonna divide yeah, into yeah. different boxes, yeah, yeah. So she can copy, okay, she can copy each of them separately, sure, right? So this makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's an admin tool, you know, we, we can overthink it all the time, but I think that's a simple enough start that is, that is. for us to, you know, for us to get started. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we know what we want to do visually, right? Yep. And we can make it prettier, we can make it, you know, simpler all the time. But first, let's see if what we ship right now for her is enough for her to work with the push notifications. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's not, then we can always, you know, make it better and, and make it more robust. And, you know, we can always uh, improve on things. Yep. Um, so now, you know, you say, and, and this is, you know, and again, this is a pairing session. And, and what we want to do is we want to, you know, get you up to speed on React and Redux and, you know, work with the APIs. Yeah. So 
this is the point where you know what you need to create, right? So you have the visuals, you know the kind of the APIs, um, uh, communication layer, right? Yeah. Um, so now the question is, um, how how you how do you get started, right? Where where do you, where did you get stuck the last time, right? So yep. we're gonna make beer. We're gonna create. We're gonna call it. Um, Module simulator. All right, let's call it module simulator. Yep. All right, so we have a, an empty Git repository called model simulator, but we have nothing here. Yep. Um, and this is, you know, this is a pretty typical start for a React application. <laughs> you, just have, <laughs> you, know, you just have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now the question is, how how do you get started, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. So. One of the things I really like to get started with is um, like a good starter project. And there are a million of those online. Um, and there, is a, there, there are a million of those online. And, you know, if you go and say React Starter, you, you'll find a million. Right? React Starter Kit, you'll have the React Bootstrap, you have, whoa! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But each of those, they will force a set of conventions on you. Ah, okay. You know what I mean? So they'll force, um, you know, a folder structure. They, they, they will force like a whole bunch of different things, yeah. right? And I think, you know, for a company like ours, you always have a React application around, mm -hmm. right? Someone started a React application somewhere around here, some, sometime, you know? Okay. Um, so one of the good things about um, you know, working on a, on, on a, something that is current is that we can see what our conventions are. You know, okay. what, what's our folder structure like? Yeah. What's our package JSON like? Yeah, Whether yeah. we have scripts like, you know, let's start a new view, let's start a new component, you know, and, and, and it's good to start like this. And this is like, you know, the way I start as well. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see if we have someone in the chat. Uh, yes, it's a guide. Um, and what we are doing is we are building a React app together. We are pair programming. And um, I, my name is Avi. Hi, I'm teaching Stevens, and we are building an app together. So thank you for joining and keep asking questions in the chat room if you want. Um, so what I like to do is I like to start like a you know a Tmax session here, mm -hmm. and then I'll just split the screen. And you know we can go to the new uh, the new matching tool, right? So okay. Robobot matching tool, and then the new React client that we have here. Um, and then let's do like one level of the tree, and, and you can see we already have a few directories here, right? So we have a dist folder, we have the node modules with like the npm install. Yeah, you remember that, right? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, we have the package.json, which has which bundles. Um, you know, software is coming with this. Uh, we have the SRC, which is the source folder. We have the start SH, which just starts the project, test, and webpack configuration. Okay. So one of the things you want to do when you know when you start a, a new um, a new project like this is you want to go ahead and say, hey, what do I need to get started, yeah. right? And usually, what you need is you need the dist folder. Right, so let's uh, do something here. So let's do um, source equals um, code Googlebot matching tool and new React client. Right, so and then we can do echo source. All right, cool. So we can do cp from the source and then the dist the dist folder to here. All right, so now here we have the disk folder. Does it include all the contents? Yeah, the, the disk folder is just one file, yeah. uh, which is uh, index.html and bundle.js, which it just put here every time you um, you compile the app. Got it. Got it. So there's nothing here. Um, I don't usually copy the node modules, all right? I do copy package.json, so we're going to copy this, so src, so source and then package.json, and I copy it here. Um, and I copy the start sh, all right? And then, oh, sorry, so copy it here. 
and then I'm copying the webpack configuration. All right. Okay. And now we already have something to you know something to start with. Um, I, I usually here. Let's see what we have in the test. We have the setup.js, so we can copy the test here as well. Um, let's copy it recursively uh, here. All right. So now we have a project that, believe it or not, we can we can try to start. All right. We don't have an index file yet. We don't have anything, but we have something to start with. So now we can either go npm install here, which will install all the packages um, and you know get us the node modules here oh one thing i forgot um so source and then um, usually the same git ignore you know we can have it here so now if we have node modules here or dist or something like that then it ignores it already okay all right so this is you know one way to get started and, and one of the one of the things i like about getting started like this is that you get like unified uh, you know structure of your project um and usually if you go to the latest project being built inside the companies, then you'll get, you know, the, the, the latest best practices, the latest tools, the latest scripts, you know, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's easy to get started. Um, and for, you know, for Ruby apps and for Go apps, we have like Yeoman packages for all of this. So you go Yo generate um, and you generate a new project. We don't yet have it for React, but we're going to have it soon. Mm -hmm. um, so we can actually now dive in here with Vim, all right? So we're gonna create a source folder, all right? And here, if we go to the index.js in the source, you'll see we have the app, okay? So we can copy this, all right? What file is this? This is src index.js. Index so we're going to create it here. Is index.js the entry point for everything? Yeah. So this is the entry point. Yeah. So we can remove the matching container and the header because we don't have them yet. Right? Um, and then you'll see that we'll start like copying more things here. So we'll, we'll start with stores, configure store, and components app. All right? So let's copy these. Um, so let's first make their um, stores and then make their uh, components and then you know what let's just put a bigger font here um, stores is for the redux stores yeah uh, so we're gonna copy from the source stores sorry uh, src stores uh, configure store and we're gonna copy it to src stores all right and then we're gonna copy from the components app but okay. what, what what are in these files like yeah we'll, 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 we'll see it in a second uh, components here all right so now You see, we have SRC components app, and then inside we have index.js, and then we have inside stores, we have configure store, right? So now if we open um, our, you know, our project in Vim, you'll see this is, this is a blank app, right? And this is how we start all the time, just blank. This, what file is this again? This, this is, is app, done. components app, index.js. And then inside stores, we have configure store, right? And you can see immediately here that we have things we don't need, right? So we have sagas that we don't know if we need here in the project yet. So we're gonna delete this, right? How, where is the file name? Or what is this? So the file name is here, src stores okay. configure store. Um, what does configure store do? So configure store configures the store for Redux, right? It creates the middleware, and applies the middleware to the application. Okay. All right. So um, let's see what we have here. So now you, you'll see we need a root reducer here. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we're going to import the root reducer from reducer index. So we need to create this in order for this file to work. Right. Okay. All right. Nice. So 
let's create this. So make the earth SP SRC reducers. Sorry, just a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. So the conf store config.js, so is that file since it configures the middleware? So there should be very few changes. Yeah, very make. few, very few. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we are going to do SRC reducers and then index.js and then paste it here. Uh, we don't need this, we don't need this. So we're going to have just like a, a blank root reducer. This is a root reducer. Yeah, this is a root reducer. And that is basically a required reducer for every Redux. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, it's not required. You don't have, you don't need um, a root reducer. Um, Oh yeah, I, I actually know about cat um, and and copy directly into Vim. Um, the thing is that I, I I want to I want Stevens here to visually see that I'm copying this from you know this side on the right here, and I'm copying this to this side on the left. Um, let's see what we have. So one question, if you don't mind, is Redux like expressing Node, which is creates the framework for you. What does it do? Or is it something like Flux that gives you unidirectional data flow? All right, so Redux is like Flux, unidirectional data flow, opinionated unidirectional data flow. All right. Um, yeah, and um, Mr. Marwu here answered that question, I just realized. Um, I don't know who Ken is. My name is Avi. Um, but yeah, I, I realize my nickname can be, can be confusing. All right, so we are... On, on our way here, all right? So in order to save us time and to save our viewers time, let's copy the node modules from the previous project, right? So just so we can start working on it. Um, so let's copy it here. Let's but copy. if we don't, if we run npm, npm up. Yeah, this npm is install. What, npm install, yeah. this is what it installs. Yeah, okay. npm install. Um, but it, is, but the, this is pulling from package that JSON? Yeah, if you do, no, if you do npm install, it, it copy, it pulls from package.json and then pulls all the modules from npm. So package.json is like a, a gem file and gem file that lock. Got right? it. Um, so when you do, you know, bundle install, it will pull what you have in the gem file and then uh, install it, you know, into RBN somewhere like in your Ruby path, right? And um, and here with, you know, npm, it's it's like inside the node modules. So yeah. the node modules are like the gems uh, storage that you have in Ruby. But we don't know what package we're gonna use. Is it? Is it okay we just like keep everything? Like, so, are we going to be removing them? No, we're going to remove stuff we don't need, right? Okay. Like the map that we have in the matching tool, like Saga that we don't know if we need right now, but we likely do because we I always like to work with Saga. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, it, it's easy to start. You know, the, the, the thing about it here, and, you know, we can do NPM start here and see if, if the application starts, and it likely will. And you know we did what 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 are we do working on? We're working on it for like I don't know ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and we mm -hmm. already have something that we can npm start with. Mm -hmm. You know we don't need like a a forced structure uh, that is being forced on us from like a different you know someone that we don't know, right? So localhost eighty eighty now is is the app, and you can see it's the Googlebot matching tool, right? And now what we can do is we can Right, we can go here, and the fan is going crazy, and we can edit this index.html, and we can have it right here, right? Um, right, we have module simulator here, and we don't need the map. We know for sure we don't need the map, mm -hmm. right? So we can remove this, but we have Bootstrap CSS because you know we like Bootstrap. This is this index. Yeah, this index HTML. And now, if you refresh, you'll see it's module simulator, and we have a blank app here. What's the difference between this index.html and app 
index.html. We don't have at index.html. Everything except here, it's JS files. So this is the... So you see div ID app in, here? This is the entry for the HTML file. Right? Yeah, but this is the HTML file. We don't really care about it because everything is being directed from the JavaScript, right? So you see here div ID app. Okay. Right. And so, where does it pull from? Yeah, so you see here, src bundle.js, all right? Okay, bundle.js. So bundle.js is the final file that all of our JavaScript file will be compiled into. Okay. And here, sorry, um, inside app index.js, you see the app, right? Yeah, that's So that's, that's, a, a, that's a definition of that's, a function, okay. right? And then in src index.js, you'll see this. So we render the app here, and then we mount it on document.getElementById app. Oh, uh, okay, I see. Right? So this this will mount it to that exactly. div. Exactly, exactly. So if you're looking for the real entry point, the real entry point to the JavaScript is index.js. In the src. All right, and then everything inside app will be rendered you know, into document.getElementById app. Got it. Got right? It, got so it. if this is now, you know, app one, then everything, you know, everything will not be rendered. It will still like work, but it won't be rendered, won't be mounted. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have something that is dependent on mounting it on the app and stuff like that, then it just will not work. So this index.html don't really change. We don't really care too much about it. Um, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, all right. Um, okay. So, SRC okay. So we can continue. Index right. Yes. Okay. So this is what we need to build. Okay. So now, <clears throat> the the question is. How do we get started? Yep. So this is the point where you got stuck the last time? Yep. All right. So how would you, this is a Rails app now, mm -hmm. right? So imagine this is Rails now, and where would you start with Rails? Oh, conventional. In Rails, I usually start with model, so I start thinking about. But you don't have a model here. You're communicating with an API. Right. I'm thinking I need something to consume the API. All right. To consume and enca encapsulate the data that mm -hmm. I need. All right. It's either a model or something that will get the data from the API and then somehow release that data to other components mm -hmm. that will that will need to use it. So right. that's my usual thought process. All right. If, if you know we put it in the Rails world, but this is the React world. That's where I get stuck, right? Okay. Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I mean, yeah. you know, that's. I think that's a valid. Uh, that's a valid point to get stuck on. You know, I think that's pretty common. Um, so, but the real question is like, all right. So you have this task. You you got this task, and you need to build this application. Yeah. Right. And now you know, forget React. You want to have this form right here. Mm -hmm. And once you submit. You want to send this form somewhere yep. and get some data from somewhere, right? Yeah. So I think that's about like as simplified as we can get with without really diving into, you know, what whether it's a model view controller or whether it's an action uh, dispatch reducer, whatever, 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 right? Yeah. Um, and, and I think it, you know, we, we can get bogged down with the with the details a lot about what is a model what is a view and what is a controller and we can say hey with angular this is you know it used to be ng controller and ng view and an ng service and stuff like that and i think before we get bogged down with the f the specific framework definition i think it's important to understand how the data flows through the system right yes. so uh, one of the things we know is once we hit this submit button right we want to send data over to the server and and say what is being selected here what's been selected here what's been selected here and what's been selected here and then the server does whatever it does with it right yeah and yeah then whatever. It, and yeah. then it returns something something and this something is an array of title 
and then text, and then title, and then text. And you grab what the server told you, and you just render it down here. Yes. Right? That's Yeah, that's the overall data flow. Um, all right, so where would you start now? Well, if we think about that way, then I would start, it seems like we should start with inputting the data. Uh, in order to get the API response, we need to give the API the, the correct parameters, and then our views need to be able to grab these data from the user. So it needs to interact with right. the user. So the, it's an interaction between the user and the application. It all seems right. like that's that's where we yeah. Yeah, but all that is fine. The, okay. the, the, the question is, you now need to build this, Okay. right? What's the first line of code you write? All right, do you I start, do you start with, this is not a trick question, right? So do you start with the view or do you start with something else? And I mean, there is no right or wrong question here. It's not a, 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 a right or I, I would, wrong I would, I would start with just writing a box. I mean. I All right, so you start with like writing this file with like writing this part here. Is that that's, what you do? That, that's what I think. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, so that's valid. I mean, why are you? Okay. <laughs> if you, we can start with that. Okay. Um, all right. So we can we can go ahead and start with that, um, and we're going to create this component, mm -hmm. and then we are going to, uh, you know, have inside the component we're going to have this, you know, uh, text input here, and then text input here, and then the check boxes, and then everything else. Okay. All right. Um, and then submit and we'll have like the action and see and see where it takes us, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so okay. So let's go ahead and, and get started with that. Um, so we're starting with basically writing the view. The, yeah, the exactly. Okay. So first let's do this and then we'll add SRC here, and then we'll add the Webpack integration. I thought we already had. It. Actually, you know what? Let's add everything. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So we we'll start the project here, um, and then let's already edit our start.sh file here, and then instead of being matching to client, let's call it module simulator. What what is this file? So this file, I'll, I will show you what this does, right? So this file is starting our project, right? So we have a module simulator, and once we do start.sh, it will start a split, you know, with Tmux. Okay. And here it will have npm start on the right side at the bottom. Here it will run the test on the left side. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're going to, there is a problem here running the test. We're going to figure it out in a minute. Um, and here, you know, on the top side, it's going to open up same. All right. Okay. So pretty straightforward. Um, and, and I like to have a start sh. You know this file already. You know, you've seen projects by me here. Um, so I like to have a start sh in every, each and every one of my projects. So I know like I do start a stage and it opens all the screens I need, all the services I need, and I'm like started, you know, so I can tear down one project and, and copy and start down and start another project really easily. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so um, yeah, so we can go ahead and get started. And the way we get started is we create a component, right? Um, and do we have that folder component? Yeah, we do for the app right now. So we have a blank one. So I this is copy over from the other. Yeah, yeah, but it, this is a blank one. You see, we don't have anything here. Okay. Would you go back to? Can I see the reducer folder? What's in there right so now? So the reducer is just a root reducer. Okay, and the store is the, store is the, the configure, configure store that store. you saw. Okay. Right. So all it does it's um, uh, connecting the root reducer connecting the logger, the thunk, which is the middleware, applies the middleware and connecting DevTools. Again, pretty simple stuff, 
Okay. Would you go back to the tree? The... Sure. Okay, so, so I just want to kind of recap. So yeah. right now, we, we in, inside our SRC, we have components, we have reducers, we have stores. That's the three yeah. folders, right? Yeah. And the index.js, it's a file, okay, inside SRC. Yeah. All right. And so in the app, we have index.js. Yeah. In the reducer, we have index.js. In the stores, we have configure store.js. Okay, so right now, we are working on components, right? Well, we're working on everything. Oh, you'll right, see, right. And, and you'll the... see every time we, you know, we add a component, we likely need to add an action, and every time we need to add an action, we need to add a reducer. Mm -hmm. So you'll see we when when we continue, uh, and and this component is pretty simple. You know, this component here that we are building now is pretty simple, and okay. we don't really need to do a lot of stuff with it because all it does is just grab some data from the component and just, you know, launches it up to the server. Okay. Um, so oh, this really freaks me out. Um, sorry, the spacing here freaks me out. I know it's just a sketch, but it freaks me out. Um, so, um, so we can start doing that, yep. right? Um, I think there is, you know, there's not much to it here, so uh, we can we can continue. Um, all right, so we're gonna create a component, and how will you call this component? The form four, yeah. So, um, so every component has its own folder, basically. Well, it doesn't have to, but it's best practice. Okay, yeah. let's just okay. I'm just asking. So, all right. So we call this component a simulator form, um, and it's gonna have an index.js, and it's also gonna have a presenter.js. So are those two files? Basically, the backbone for every component in best practice. Like we well, have, no, we're always going to have index.js. You're always going to have index.js, but you're not always going to have presenter.js. Okay. Um, so the thing is this. So with with React and and and, and Redux, uh, you have two different types of components. You have containers and you have components. So the difference between those is that a container is responsible for communicating with Redux and a component has absolutely no knowledge about Redux or the state. It only accepts parameters, uh, which you know in, in React language, it's properties from the container, right? Okay. So once a property has changed, it will be passed down to the component, right? So you can also call them smart and dumb components, right? So smart components, you know, communicate with React, with Redux, accept new properties and stuff like that. And then dumb components will only accept properties. They don't launch events, they don't do anything except except get properties. So presenter is the dumb component and container no, is no, the... No, so that, that's exactly what I'm getting at. So inside a smart component, we have index.js, which is the file that is the functions. And then we have presenter.js, which is the presentation layer, right? So we'll do like this. So comp index here, uh, we'll call it form simulator. So which one is the container? So this is the container. The presenter.js? Yeah. So, and then we call presenter, just a sec. So presenter, why, why is it not working? Uh, all right, so presenter, and then this is form simulator. All right, all right, so just, let's just recap here. What, make beer. Oh, simulator form, damn it. this and just a cleanup um, are you deleting that? no 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 I'm just like rename renaming the class um, yeah so so this is you need to imagine this as like the the presentation layer which is going to have the HTML markup and then the communication layer, which is which will have the, you know, functions that communicate with with Redux, right? So, but what is so this what? is this is 
all of this, this is one component. So this file and this file is just one component. Index and presenter is one, is component. one component. Oh, so, so these these things combine into one component. Yeah, so you can see here, it's simulator form, and then this exports the default connect, which is the Redux, you see this? So connect coming from React Redux, Yeah. right? And then it exports connect with map state to props and map dispatch to props here to the simulator form. And then simulator form is being imported from the presenter. Okay. So this is the presenter here, this file, and it, it creates a class called simulator form and exports it by default here. All right? Okay. So here okay. you'll have like presentation, you'll have HTML markup, and here you'll have like the stuff that's coming from Redux, like map state to props, which maps exactly what it says. It's map the states to the props of the of the component. So this this all can be one file. I just like to to have it separate for clarity levels. Sure. So is this going to build into one of the dumb or smart components? So yeah, this, so is, this is one smart component. This is a container component. Yeah. Yeah. The other one, the dumb component that doesn't know Redux is, is we refer we, it as we have, presentational. Yeah, we haven't we component. haven't written one yet. So okay. when we when we'll write one, you'll see it. Okay, so we're working on a container component. Yeah. Right? So let's okay. do this. This is the form. Okay. All right. So let let me also tell you something here, right? Mm -hmm. So this file has a problem with it. Why? Because this does not exist. Okay. Right. But one thing you you'll see here. Is that this webpack yeah. is not telling us this okay all right and the reason for this is is even though this is in our project all right it is not being referenced by any by any file by, by any other class or by any other file and therefore it's not being picked up by webpack here what's not being picked Required. This, these files are not getting picked up. Are it's not getting files? compiled into our final bundle.js file. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do here in app index, sorry, so in src index.js, we are going to import ah, I see. the uh, form, no, simulator form from uh, components simulator form. And then here inside app, we're going to render it here. And now you'll see we have an error, uh, right? Because okay. only now it's being referenced and only now it's being, it's being compiled. Picked up, okay. Now right? it's being picked and up. And then we, when we save it and we remove this, um, oh, sorry, that's actually not, not the right error. So let's see this. Uh, so simulate or form. So, all right. From components. Oh, it's actually components on this level. All right. So now it will be a different a different error, and now it's the right one. Right? Cannot resolve actions. All right. So here you'll see that inside of our simulator form index, we're referencing actions, which we don't have yet. So we, we can remove this. So now it's gonna... What's running on the right side again? NPM on the right side start? is npm start. All right, then we're gonna save it. Now we're green. Every time we save, it auto rerun? Yeah. Okay. So now, um, and now when we refresh, all right, you'll see this is the form, which is coming Where from is here. From? Okay, this is okay. This is the uh, in presenter.js. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. So let's see what we have in the chat room here. Um, yeah, I'm going up a director. You were right. You caught it. Uh, thank you. And yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for commenting. We appreciate it. Um, all right, cool. So we have the form, um, you know, rendering. Uh, it's obviously not the real form, um, but we're going to build it in a second. Um, so now you see, you know, if we take a step back here, now you see that we have a React application with Redux running, right? And we have it mounted and we already created a new component and it's mounted on, on the HTML.
But we haven't, we don't, we didn't touch anything with Redux here. I no, mean, not yet. But yeah. I mean, you know, it's connected. It's connected. You know, we haven't uh, implemented any part of our code yet. But I mean, it's it's like here. Where where, where is Redux being referenced in the project again? It's in Configure Store. Configure Store. Okay. And then I remember you showed me this, but just just one more time. Where ultimately, where do we mount the this component? Do we mount it in the SRC? Uh, yeah. So this one is in app. Uh, sorry, it's SRC index.js. A simulator here, form. Simulator form. Okay. 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 So that's where. Okay. That's where it started. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. It's very clear. Um. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So one thing that we actually need here, you know, that we, you know, we want one container or actually one component that will contain both of these and will be like the HTML markup, right? So we're going to have this component here and then this component will contain the form and will contain the bottom one as well. Okay. Just because we want like a div for this and you know whatever or we can have it here so we can have like div class name equals container right we, so we can do it here it's a valid one as well you know the application is small enough to not care about it um but like in bigger apps i would like have have this as a as a separate one okay right and you see container and because this is um, uh, bootstrap, then we already have this. All right, so bootstrap, um, header, let's just have a header here. Um, all right, you know what? We can SRC code. Um, come on, come on, come on. Googlebot matching tool, new React client, SRC component header. So I already have a header here in another app. All right, so let's go ahead and do this um, here. Let's just copy this here for a minute. Let's see what we have. All right. All right, so we have this, right? Okay. Just nice. Um, and we can uh, refactor this into an external component. Um, so we'll have SRC components header, right? Header, and here we'll only have an index.js, all right? Okay, because we don't need that much. Yeah, and then we create a simple component and we call it header, right? And you see all we do is return return some, you know, some HTML markup, right? Mm -hmm. Quick question here. Yeah, go ahead. So, so on this file, on the right side, so import React component from React, import React DOM from React DOM. We so don't these are just need React DOM. So this is just importing like default API from the library, basically. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, so now here, oh, the container actually is here. And the simulator 4 is inside. You can remove this. And then here we have an extra div now. All right, so save this and then save this. And then here we can import the header from components Header. And then here we'll have the header. Mm. All right, save, save, save. Let's see if we have it. Yep. And we do, and it's fine. All right. So now we're starting with like a some HTML markup at least. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and look at our mockup again. Let's see if we have someone in the chat room asking something. Uh, nope. No questions yet. All right. So we'll have this region ID, current date, tribes, and then current time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do this. Um, so we are inside simulator. You know what? This is simulator form and then presenter. All right, so let's have something here. Um, all right, so. All right, so div here. Um, all right, you know what? So let's do something like this. Um, so now I'm like, I'm debating between myself, you know, I'm, I'm debating inside myself and saying, should I build this as I would normally build it? Or should I build this simpler, you know, for the, for the teaching effect here? Um, because I wouldn't build it this way, you know, it would make it more dynamic. Um, just make it simpler, I think. Yeah. It's a good idea. So just so you'll understand, what I would do here is I would not duplicate the markup. Right. What I'm what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to duplicate the markup. Right. I'm going to have a label and I'm going to call it region ID. Uh -huh. I'm going to have label here and then here I'm going to have the input. Right. Type equals text. You know. Yeah. We can extract that later. I mean. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I mean that's that's fine. But what I would normally have is I would have like a JavaScript object and have it like you know something like this. So uh, form and then here I would have you know, fields, which would be an array, and then, you know, field title, which would be the region ID, and then a field ID, which would be something like, you know, region ID, what we need to send to the server, yeah. you know, and then type, I would say, hey, this should be a text, all right, and then values, you know, should be something like this, right, and then I would duplicate this for the tribes as well, and then the values of the tribe will be the IDs of the tribe. Mm -hmm or you know the IDs and the name of the tribes right okay. but i think for now this is you know this is out of context to kind of get you bootstrapped here get mm -hmm. you up to speed yeah um and you know just just as a comment i would not build you know i would not build it this simple um because first it will have like a lot of markup here that is just like jarhead code yeah. You know, there's not a lot of smartness here. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. yeah so, all right. So, um, input type equals text, and we'll have ID. We don't really need the ID. All right, so, um, and we'll have something like on change equals this dot, uh, 